Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Post Cologne. Today I'm gonna to be unboxing three Middle Eastern fragrances, including Al Watania's Oud Elixir. So let's jump into it. All right, we are back with another unboxing first impressions video of three Middle Eastern fragrances that I recently picked up. I got an Ahmed Al McRibi, I got a Rayhan, and I got that Al Watania Oud Elixir. So pretty excited about these. Links will be down in the description if you decide you wanna check any of these fragrances out along with some coupon codes, save yourself a few bucks, have yourself smelling great with a bit of a discount. So let's quit screwing around and let's get into it. All right, kicking things off, going to the house of Ahmed Al McRibi with Ahmed Al McRibi's Azure Royal. Now I scooped this up for 37-ish dollars at Perfume Online and Ahmed Al McRibi has been serving me well so far, so pretty excited to try this one out, but don't know too much about this one, so let's just dive in, shall we? All right, and there we have the box presentation for Ahmed Al McRibi's Azure Royal. Kind of slides off like a so. There is this plaster cardboard cover that's sitting on that and it does open up like a so, revealing our fragrance bottle on the inside. So nice thick cardboard box to this. Decent presentation, pretty straightforward otherwise, but digging it, digging it, Almond Olic Reby. Bottle presentation on this. Nice looking bottle, nice clear glass with a little tinge of some blue that's going on there and a little bit of kind of like a chiseled edge to it, but overall nothing too fancy. Cap on this, a little bit of a lightweight plastic. There's a little bit of metal in there, so it's not too cheapy feeling. It's got a little bit of weight to it. And the atomizer on this bad boy. Ooh, it's a bit of a pressurized atomizer. Oh yes, it is a pressurized atomizer. Like me, a good pressurized atomizer. But what does this smell like? So right out the gate, just smelling this in the air. A very a fresh, fruity, sweet style of fragrance. It's it's not a clone of, but it's in the neighborhood of kind of that Herba Pura style of kind of like fruity sweetness that's going on. A little bit of muskiness as well, but really strong pear in the air right now. Quite nice, very lovely. Let's get this on paper, dig in. Yeah, so right out the gate, just smelling this off paper. Very dominant pear note that's coming through, mixing with some really nice sweet accords. Little hint of some florals that's going in there, but it's got this nice kind of watery, fresh brightness to it as well. A little bit of ambroxin and some muskiness, but really the star of the show is that fruity pear that's coming through. Not like sugary sweet, it's very fruity sweet at this point, and it's just got a real kind of nice refreshing, uplifting sort of vibe going on to it, so quite nice. Uh, I did say at the beginning it got a little bit of that Herba Pura vibe and maybe the Tizani Terreri's uh, Kirk sort of vibe, that real kind of fruity sweetness, but I find this is a lot smoother. It has like a softness to it as well as that freshness that's going on. I find those other fragrances and dupes of them, they, they can be really kind of synthetic and scratchy almost at the beginning, whereas this one is a very nice, smooth, kind of delicate, sweet pear note that's coming through with those floral touches around the edges and just that little hint of ambroxan, just kind of giving it a bit of a push and a little hint of muskiness. Very much a unisex fragrance. I would say, yeah, probably unisex. Like this might lean a little bit feminine for, it depends on your point of view really, but like I would wear this one, but some of you out there might find this to, to lean a little bit on the feminine side, but it is a very fruity, sweet, fresh style of fragrance. If you're into that, you're, you're gonna like this one. Yeah, really nice. The quality on this is fantastic. I'm really enjoying like just the smoothness, the fresh aspects of this with that, that fruity accord that's coming through. Really nice level of sweetness, not kind of like toothache inducing or too like sugary sweet. Really nice balance, enjoying this one, but let's skip to the dry down, see how it unfolds, and we'll go from there. All right, we are back, but I've had a few of you ask for a puppy update. If you remember from a few months back, I got a brand new puppy named Gracie, a little Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and she's she's not so little anymore. My little nugget is growing up, and she's quite big, but she's happy, healthy, and she's full of crazy, aren't you? So there you go, puppy update. All right, now we're back with the dry down of Amin Alvik Ribi's Azure Royale. A bit of a mouthful. Didn't change a whole lot. It's still maintaining that fruity sweetness. That pear note is still dominant within this, but it has those other fruity accords that are mixing in. Little bit more cedar woods come forward and the muskiness and this is kind of bumped up ever so slightly, but there's this nice kind of like airy freshness is coming through from the florals in the mid. It almost has like a bit of an orange blossom kind of touch to it. So a little bit of some like sweetness, a little bit of some freshness is going on and it really works nice with that sweet accord. And then there's the Ambroxan and the Isui Super that's kind of mixed in there giving this a bit of a push. So this is like a fairly strong style of like fresh, summery, fruity style of fragrance. Not aggressive, this isn't like a Almond Elven Grevy Cough, for example, that, which is just a nuclear fragrance. But this does have a little bit of power to it, which I am quite enjoying, but I'm really impressed with the smoothness of this fragrance. It's very, 
like I said, has this nice freshness, this nice softness to it as well. And it doesn't have that kind of screechy synthetic sort of vibe you get from some of the more kind of fresh fruity style of fragrances. Like I said before, some of those like Herba Pura style of clones. This moved away from the Herba Pura and it kind of has its own thing going on, but it's definitely in that genre of the Herba Puras, the Kirk style of fragrances. Very much a unisex style of fragrance. I think if you're into fresh fruity style of fragrances, whether you're male or female, you're going to enjoy this one. But for the men out there that are into kind of more like bold masculine style of fragrances, you might find this to be a little bit too fruity, too fresh on that, that spectrum. So it depends where you sit on that. But I really enjoy this one. I think this is a fantastic fragrance. And I think for 37 bucks pending performance, which I think is gonna be good, this is a great pickup. That's Ahmed Omegribi's Azure Royal. All right, next up, going to the house of Rayhan with Rayhan's Wood Noir. Now you can scoop this up for between $30 and $40 at various discounters and Rayhan, I've been having some pretty good luck with Rayhan's lately, so let's keep that going, shall we? All right, and there we have the box presentation for Rayhan Wood Noir. Got kind of a wood grain pattern there. It's got some Arabic writing kind of embossed and some glossy black on there, but otherwise, typical cardboard box. Check out the bottle. All right, there we have the bottle presentation for Rayhan Wood Noir. Same sort of Arabic writing on there, kind of embossed, got a bit of a texture to it, kind of a wood grain pattern on the cap right there, but it is kind of a plasticky cap. That's not an actual wood. It is a little bit, of, it's pretty lightweight actually, but it's got some thickness to it, so this won't crushing my powerful hand necessarily. Nice kind of gloss finish to this, nice gloss black. And the atomizer on this. Ooh, decent atomizer. This shoots halfway across the room. It'll get the job done for sure. But what does this smell like? So right off the rip, just smelling this in the air. Really nice, spicy, woody style of fragrance. It has that kind of Szechuan pepper and cardamom going on in the air. Nice little bit of woods going on. There's like a little hint of some woody oud that's going on, but just kind of an overall medley of some woods going on. Really reminds me of Tom Ford's oud wood. That's pretty much what I'm getting from this one right now, but really nice. The spice profile on this is great. Let's get this on paper, dig in. Yeah, right off the rip, just smelling this off paper. Really nice spices going on. Kind of a nose tickle style of like this Chinese pepper Szechuan style of spice going onto it with that cardamom that's mixed in there. And it's mixing in with like this nice kind of rosewood combination with a little bit of that oud as well. So it's got this nice kind of dark, spicy sort of vibe going on to it. Very kind of like bold, masculine style. The, the, the spice balance in this is really nice. I'm digging this one. As it's opening up a little bit more, the wood profile is kind of sort of kind of taking the lead a little bit more. It was balanced off with those spices at the beginning, but the woods are really pushing forward right now. I'm getting little hints of some vetiver. There's a kiss of some sandalwood, but it's really about that, that oud that's coming through, that rosewood that's coming through, and it's really fusing in with that, that, that really spicy kind of Szechuan pepper, that Chinese pepper. That cardamom is still there, but just again, a really kind of spiced woods sort of vibe going on to it, but those woods are coming forward a lot more. And like I said, very bold, very masculine, digging this. Yeah, a little kiss of some sweetness coming forward, like a vanillic accord coming in from that base, but it's still very much that spicy woody profile that's coming in. But it's just kind of like softening it up, balancing it out a little bit with just a slight kiss of some sweetness coming through. It's just overall very nice and very reminiscent of that Tom Ford oud wood. So let's skip to the dry down, see how this unfolds, and we'll go from there. All right, back with the dry down of Arayhan's Wood Noir. Been about an hour, let it settle down, do its own thing. Didn't change a whole lot. It's still very much that kind of spicy, woody profile that's going on to it. I thought a little bit more sweetness from that those vanillic accords would come up from the base, but they've pretty much sat where they were from that initial opening. Might be a little bit different off of skin, but really it's about this, this oud wood that's coming through. So in a kind of nice dry, rich style of oud wood, mixing with that Chinese pepper, that very kind of Szechuan, nose tickling style of pepper. The cardamom has dropped back quite a bit. You're not getting as much cardamom in the dry down as you were in that initial opening, but there are touches of those other woods that kind of play with the, the oud that's in here as well. Like I said, not as kind of a skanky oud that comes through. It's very kind of dry woodiness that mixes in and just fuses in with that pepper really nice. So it's masculine, rugged, bold. It's got this kind of almost like sophisticated mystique to it as well. Like a bit of a gentlemanly vibe, but like I said, it's more on the rugged side with that spice coming through. And it is quite nice and it is very, like I said, reminiscent of the Tom Ford Oud Wood and for 30 to $40 pending performance, if you're into that style of fragrance, you're, you're definitely gonna like this one. It's just the spice in this is just kind of a room filling spice and I'm enjoying this one. So might be worth checking out. 
That's Rahan's Wood Noir. All right, next up, going to the house of Alwatania with Alwatania's Oud Elixir. Now you can scoop this up for about $29 at various discounters and haven't heard too much about this one. Pretty excited. Let's dive in. All right, so here we have the box presentation for Alwatania's Oud Elixir. Pretty straightforward. It's got kind of a nice pattern going around there with some Arabic writing and a little bit of a pattern on the side of the box there, but typical cardboard box. Let's get to the bottle. All right, and there we have the bottle presentation for Alwatania's Oud Elixir. Nice looking bottle, has this kind of textured glass to it. I don't even know what that pattern's called, but you've all seen that before. Cap on this is a wooden cap, which is quite nice and got some thickness to it as well. And the atomizer on this bad boy. Uh oh, there we go. Another good atomizer halfway across the room will absolutely get the job done. But what does this smell like? So right out the gates, just smelling this in the air. Really nice kind of warm spice and sweetness that's going on. A little hint of like some, maybe some tobacco leaf that's going on, but it's really about the cinnamon that's happening right now. A really kind of nice thick sort of sweet note that's happening with here. A little hint of some sour cherry perhaps as well and almost like a little bit of a booziness that's going on to it. So it, it kind of reminds me of the KLE's invite only, but it's also got like, I'm not saying this is a clone of, but it's got like a little bit of that, that same spice profile is kind of like an angel share type deal. So really quite nice, kind of like a sexy vibe going on to it. Let's get this on paper, let's dive in. Yeah, so right off the rip, just smelling this off the paper. It's a lot different than it was in the year. The booziness off the paper is a lot stronger. It's got a real kind of like cognac, like whiskey sort of booziness that's going on with that spice profile. The sweetness is dialed down compared to what I was smelling in the air, but warm spice has that booziness that's going on to it. Not as sweet as like the angel shares, it, a little bit of that KLE invite only sort of vibe going on to it. So it's like somewhere in between right there, but really boozy in the opening here. As it's opening up a little bit more, the booziness is dying off pretty quick here. It's still there, but it's really fallen back. That initial opening is very boozy in that opening. Now, more about that cinnamon coming through. There's some sweet accords. You get this nice vanillic mix. So it's kind of like vanilla benzoin tonka combination, I think that's moving in there. That sour cherry kind of sweet fruitiness is, is popping in from the back a little bit. And it's just, it's kind of got a medley of some sweet accords going on to it, but they're very kind of warm, kind of like warm spice, warm sweet accords that are moving in with this. And it's just a very kind of inviting and cozy style of fragrance right now. Yeah, and as this is moving towards the dry down right now, more of that sweet's coming forward. So it's warm spice, almost like a desserty sort of feel going on to it, mixing with that vanilla. So like a, like a praline, almost like a hazelnutty sort of vibe going on to it. Not quite nutty, but it's got that kind of desserty style of feel going on to it. Just with that mix of the spices, as well as those sweet chords, really quite nice. But let's skip to the dry down, see how this unfolds, and we'll go from there. All right, back with the dry down of Al Watania's Oud Elixir been an hour, let's settle down, do its own thing. I wasn't too sure where this one was headed when from that initial opening. It, like I said, it kind of had a mix of that KLE invite only. It had little hints of some angel share going on. And I'd have to say it's kind of like a mix of the both, but I thought it was gonna get a lot sweeter and it didn't. It balanced off really nice with the spices. So you're still getting that cinnamon, a little bit of woods has come forward. So you get some sandalwood that's coming from the base. Little hint of that kind of that sour cherry style of like sweet tartness that's coming coming through little hints of some vanilla you're still getting that kind of praline desserty style of, of base to it but it's not overly sweet it's really balanced off nice with that warm spice with a kind of like a warm cozy inviting style of sweetness that's there with some nice earthy tones that comes through so it gives it kind of like a, a dry sort of accord with a little bit of kind of some just some earthy textures that are working into it very interesting fragrance it's kind of somewhere in between the the invite only with some angel share but it's it's both twists of that that makes Maybe no sense, but it's in that genre if you're trying to kind of figure out where this one sits, but it's very nice. Great date night fragrances to me, a great winter style of fragrance. Like I said, cozy, warm, inviting style of fragrance. I would say this is unisex, but I do think this is kind of tilting a little bit on the masculine side with those warm spices coming through and that little hint of that earthiness that's there as well. It doesn't, it's not overly sweet where it would kind of tilt to the feminine side. So I do think this is kind of more catered towards the gentleman, but I do think the ladies could enjoy this one as well. And for uh, 29 bucks pending performance, I think this is going to be a great fall winter style of fragrance and I'm, I'm eager to try this out once it gets cooler out. So pretty happy with this one. That's Alwatania's. Oud Elixir. 
All right, so there you have it. That's three Middle Eastern fragrances that I recently picked up, but I wanna hear from you guys. It's getting close to the fall time. I'm curious, what are some fall fragrances you wanna see me do an unboxing, first impressions, a full review on? Comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your different recommendations, your hidden gems, different tastes and scent profiles. Appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see y'all next time.